related with uh, some uh, ongoing collaboration, sometimes they continue, sometimes this continues as we well with Patricio's uh, research group, but also with the idea of integrating more and more people into these kind of activities. I want to thank you, some of the contributors here that did a part of my research group, students in the, in the biological systems engineering, as well as other researchers around the many places in, in the world that have been somehow related to what we are pro uh, producing here. So the outline, we all we talk about data, data everywhere. We, all, we talk a lot about big data and if it's really big or it's becoming big. Uh, the multidimensional essence of the data, the scientific innovation in terms of what we can produce or how we can integrate uh, the advancement of the science together with the technological development. And the, the background I will describe a little bit of the Nebraska and Navarro Resources District just as a very nice setting to build this kind of tool and uh, as a very controlled system as well. Uh, the architecture of the and the development of the tool and the, some of the activities that we have been working this year. Well, data use. I like to show these two slides, these two figures, just to evidence a couple of things. One is what the size of the largest data set that you have used or you have generated recently, and this is a broad perspective. Is a um, uh, survey that was developed by Science in 2011, and this is more or less five years ago how the scenario was. And also this is like the figure on the right relates more about the funding and what is the data creation. That is the preservation of the data. And also there is another term that involves metadata. And those are critical components because we generate data on a daily basis, but we don't think about how we can store those data. And those data reflect information in the future. Those data also represent things that were built or uh, used to answer certain type of questions and are currently used in order to answer another type of questions. And I'm going to be more explicit in this case. And these questions are related with how these databases have been built, like as independent silos for the water, food, and energy. Every research group here and in many places around the world have collected data. Just Kate mentioned some of the data that she's working with. The, Akamal mentioned about data on food and the bioinformatics, how it's producing and improving this. And in the energy sector, we also relate these data with what the activities currently are in the state. And basically related with the use of energy to extract water and irrigate, but they, at the same time to produce more energy, which is the case of the biofuels but also to transport water, to mobilize water and produce energy in the case of the hydropower generation. And at the end of the day, we have also energy involved because of the radiation of the sun and how these produce by a enhance or a use the photosynthesis or produce photosynthesis and increase productivity overall. So we have those, uh, that slide, previous slide reflects what could be seen in a center pivot such as the one that the William just described, but we happen to have more than 95,000, and I think we are hitting in the, something in the order of 115,000 uh, wells around the, uh, just around Nebraska. So if we think along this line, and what is the data that we are, have available, and if it's continuous data, or if it's discontinuous, if it's uh, equally dense along the state, well, we have probably some, of, some, of, some surprises shown here. So we need to illustrate that, this in terms of how we use, and when we use this data, this groundwater, for example, as a, we can call it as a subsidy, right? happens to be a subsidy for the deficit of uh, precipitation, happens to be a subsidy as well from an economical perspective, because when the, day, when the drought comes, for example, we use this resource and provide a benefit, economical benefit. The data, as we can see, is important, 
And in terms of from a climatic perspective, or from a climatic perspective, this is kind of a representation presented by Overbeck in 2011 of how, how the data is growing. An interesting thing here is that the data is growing in two senses. Well, data produced by models, and we have talked about models here already. It's also produced by satellite and radar. We have talked about those issues as well. But we could see that the data in less than, in a probably smaller rate is just barely increasing from the field data. And it's important to note or not, that those field data are fine, uh, relevant in order to make this model and the satellite radar data good. I have made, made some questions about the reliability of the data because we need to make sure that the data that we produce has a good quality. Another trend here is not, reflect, is not the, based on the data, but it's based on the vulnerability as well as the impact of, or the effect of, uh, of extreme events. This is a plot developed by Munich Re. Munich Re basically provides insurance services to the insurance companies and to countries. It's a big insurance company. And they have come up with this uh, examination of what the number of severe weather losses associated with extreme events, all of them with some water deficits or superabits of water resources. And they are increasing. So this is another trend interesting that comes up and shows a little bit of the data we, we want to integrate somehow. But this representation developed by Dr. Irmak and his group, and there is another representation developed by the, also by the USDA, which some data pointed out with, the, with letters, with words there, shows a little bit this trend in how it has increased the water, crop water use efficiency this is in the state and is based on the on maize. And if you see this basically, this trend, positive trend, is just due to the technological development. And don't ask me that, I'm not uh, at all a geneticist, but I think it's genetics uh, what plays a critical role here, a key role here. But if you see at the same time, we have some kind of drops, basically when the, when the extreme events occur. So that is what we would like to explore and what we would like to investigate when we deal with the day, climate data and other variables in the continuum of the water from the atmosphere to the aquifer. And well, some of the challenges pointed out by, the, by science in this 2011 the volume that they presented is that they are producing more data than our capability to store. That's a fact and we have data in our computers, and sometimes we are deleting, deleting things, and then we probably have problems in, oh, why I delete this file? But we also have a lot of data that we don't use. So there are many, many challenges about how we can uh, scrutinize and define what would be the best way to store and save the right the data. Most of, most of the data that we have, lack of metadata, that means is how it was retrieved and obtained. That is important in order to do or run the quality control. Data archiving is reduced and the access as well is constrained. Part of the access is not how easy it is to find the data, is if the individual who would like to use the data has the technical capabilities or the literacy to access that data. That is important as well. And that is related with the need, needs of tools to analyze those collected data. So when we have all that scenario, complexities, variety of data, we come up as well with how we can integrate in order to deal with some of the challenges such as the nexus water, food, and energy, which, and I apologize for the slide, I think uh, Microsoft and Mac and the uh, Apple sometimes do, do not like each other, so this is an example of that. And the, <laughs> And basically, the main idea here is how we can integrate this data in order to produce or improve the, our ability to predict water states, or in this particular case, a complete integrated system of the next water to that energy. As we could see, food is security related with the meeting food production, energy security providing energy for that growing population, and also related with the growing economy. And Water security, basically, in order to provide the water resources for that population. 
So that implies that we need to think about how we integrate all this data, translate it into information and then to knowledge, to finally reach these little guys here that basically are stakeholders. In order to do that, I think as many of you started with, let's clean this data, and I think that is the basis, the basis of what we are proposing here. So the goal is to facilitate the stakeholders' access to information from big data publicly available, as well as private data individually generated. Improve the research to operations to societal benefit. Basically, this is deal with not other thing as translating this data into information and then to knowledge. Develop the software tools that collect, the store, and analyze the data and deliver information. This is not all other thing that probably develop some analytics that some of those are, for example, things that William K. just showed to us, and how this data that is available there can be used for those stakeholders. Our setting is, the, is Nebraska, and it's particularly interesting because, as you all know, we have the energies. They administer the, water, the groundwater used to irrigation, broadly speaking. We have the Department of Natural Resources looking into the surface water in the different streams, so it's some sort of control system. In a hypothetical case, a nice case, we could have access to all these well-developed databases. How often they are, if they are homogenized or not, well, that is something that we need to improve. And we need to create databases that are interoperable. That means that we can flow data and information on the vertical that might be the different energies and on the horizontal that might be from the farmer to the a government a federal agency so that, that programmer doesn't like to share that data with them but eventually sharing will work to that end and benefit all of us. So the activities are the development of data collection, a data collection system. At least at this point from the publicly available data the development of the standards and the and development of some analytics and information, synth uh, information synthesis technologies. This is WAFIS, is the Water for Food Interoperability Information System. WAFIS is a platform that we have that currently is under development. We have the build up two kind of system, parallel systems, one built or program in Java and the other program in Python. The main idea is that one could be friendly and better used for data that, such as the one that Patricio and Kate were showing today. And the other is more, for example, for a useful for agencies. And we are targeting here agencies such as Mexico and the National Weather Service there, which probably would like to handle with Python some of the analytics and the synthesis techniques. This end of our started last year. We presented some of the first uh, developments were pretty much in the, in the area of web services and local resources. We are extracting the currently data through web services from the High Plains Regional Climate Center and as well from other uh, instances in, in NOAA. Basically, the NCDC and the CPC providing some of the data that can flow on a regular basis, I would say on a daily basis we can, or on a real time we can download it as much as they have them available. But we are, have also contacted some other uh, agencies, local agencies in this particular case, the Nebraska Geological Survey, and one of my PhD students, uh, Patricio Grassini, who will sp uh, speak later today, so hang around because he's gonna show some very interesting Patricio, sorry, uh, Alessandro Maranto. <laughs> I kind of Italian names, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. So Alessandro will be presenting some of this work, and uh, it's very interesting to stick around. But we have here a representation of how diverse is the data, right? We have around 115,000 wells with this continuous data. We have also around 80 weather stations that are locally developed or are locally maintained. 
plus some other weather stations that belong to the national uh, climate station network. So overall, we have been working on how we can translate this station data into gridded forms. What we have here is a development of a gridded form 116 degree that's part of a little bit of the analytics. We are working right with the codes in how we can alter this resolution, increasing the resolution, and coming up with the estimations of the uncertainty associated with those different representations of the, that particular case was a simulation of evapotranspiration. So 116 degree resolution is something in the order of six by six kilometer grid cells. So then what we, we're, what we are currently working is with the IPIs, which are basically forms or translators of different formats. That's our way to start standardizing data. So we are getting those net CDF data sets that the, was working with the, ah, my colleague from Kearney was working about the net CDFs. Do we have net CDFs, which are, we have C, uh, CDS, and, oh, that's a pharmacy. CSV and all these kind of data formats that we are translating in order to make them friendly and available to the public in such a way that we can use, for example, or translate these NetCDF forms or HDF forms into something that could be integrated or could be aggregated into an Excel spreadsheet that can be useful for anybody. So that is some of the work that we are currently work, uh, doing with the University of Baja uh, California, the computer science program there. And this is more or less the scheme or the framework we are working with the, with the pl data plugins and as well the development of the API, APIs and capabilities <coughs> and all these kind of things. Analytics and synthesis. Analytics and synthesis, people have wondered why you want to do or compete with big companies such as Monsanto, John Deere, who are already developing these? Main idea here is to develop a test bed that allows basically to work in this area. The test bed would allow us as well to establish collaborations or perhaps the close relationship with people who work in extension such as uh, Patricio, Darren Rodney, who is another collaborator here, that could reach the educator, could reach the advisor, or could reach the stakeholder directly, and make sure that whatever we are proposing is fulfilling their demands, which is something that we are currently missing. So we have been working on analytics of, for example, extreme events. And this is a work that Carlos Carrillo, my postdoc, and Alessandro have been working with in order to investigate what are the indices and metrics that could be useful for three different sectors, the crop sector, the livestock, and the community sectors. What are those variables that they are interested and are relevant to make decisions? Once that we have those, we will start exploring the, uncertainty, the uncertainties as well as we will be modifying something that may eventually fit in more particular cases, let's say the soybean versus the, the maize sector or the corn sector. The predictability, at the end of the day, what we would like is to see what is the predictability of groundwater changes in a, in a, in a changing climate. That's kind of what the Alessandro will be talking about later, so I will not uh, expand so much on this part. But the main idea is to get this data, quality control, identify what would be the sources of uncertainty, and propagate those sources in order to establish our forecast. Our interest is the subseasonal to the seasonal forecast, which is one of the most relevant for decision making in terms of the irrigation policies. And it also is a question mark, basically, not just for us in the agricultural sector, but this worldwide a big challenge. Just uh, not more than three weeks ago, the National uh, Academy of Sciences published, published that report that what would be the expectations to develop seasonal and semi-seasonal forecasts for the following 10 years. So this also is leading to how we can improve these forecasts and how we can integrate these analytics. So we work with the University of Querétaro as well as the 
Pierce Institute of, Agriculture, of Science and Agriculture in France and other institutions in order to translate this data, download the data, or downscale the large scale data into hydrologically relevant information at the field scale. This is some of the work, work that we are working in testing what is the sensitivity of those changes in the resolution and the, and the explain them in terms of reliable and suitable uh, measurements or suitable variables for the stakeholders, decision makers, or probably even policy makers. The scientific innovation then, this is what we are enhancing. This is what we are trying to integrate the pro our scientific progresses together with our technological developments in, in order to incentivize this. This is one of the critical parts. The product is what we are currently doing. This is the future, trying to integrate not just a, or develop this in a single energy, but develop this as a common ground for the, the Nebraska and could be seen as well as a very relevant case for the rest of the, of the country of the world. I think it's a very progressive government, that water government setting that they, we should be looking to. Water resilience is another aspect. If we have good data, and if we develop the right data, we might be able to test this kind of or take this challenge. And with that further information, that is all what I have today. We appreciate the support of the Water for Food Institute. We appreciate as well the support of other agencies. We have been lucky to generate some funds and some of the collaborations in the countries I mentioned. They are running currently projects that are enhancing our activities related to the development of WAFIS. Thank you very much.